instance, I have some real estate clients. And when journalists report about the high crime in Barbados, they they, they something, you know, a, 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 a tourist um, got mugged. And we put it on the front page of the newspaper. And it's picked up by international news. And then the whole, I, whole island is held on the scrutiny for this one act, which is like if you, if say the person come from New York City. Um, so this is one act of violence against one tourist for 365 days. But we put it on the front page because to us it's a big thing. Um, not realizing that it's an entire global issue. Um, it's not just about our local coverage is going to be picked up and our local reputation of the islands at stake. The livelihood then of the business community who sell real estate to overseas people and to Barbados as you know as being law on crime and to um, another country who didn't have any crime at like Montserrat who at first didn't have any crime at all. You know, you are now, you now have to balance how you report the news. You have to be more conscious how you report the news um, when you're handling the reputation of the country. I think that, that that's how I would do the politics, um, the, politic, the political end of it, more from a nationalistic point of view <coughs> rather than strictly politics. Because, um, of course, I think that politicians are public people, and I don't, and their whole life is an open book. But when you're reporting on political issues of a national significance, I think that you have to be more responsible and have a, a bigger picture um, in terms of how you treat the news. In terms of panic, also I remember um, working with the Barbados Port, Around the time there was the H1N1 crisis, mm -hmm. and we had a ship. Dominica refused the ship, which was technically illegal because you're not really supposed to um, refuse. There's a contract with the port and the ships not to refuse a ship that had that had any issues. But Dominica said nobody with the potential of the H1N1 company to my port. Mm -hmm. So they they actually came to Barbados. Barbados accepted them. But then it um, threw the whole port in the uproar because the, the, the employees, they said that they don't want to go anywhere close to it and the whole national issue where um, Minister Health came down, the Chief Medical Officer came down and that sort of thing. But you, my, what I'm getting at is that really the truly person did not have h one and one but how it would have been reported initially would have thrown the whole country into a panic for no reason. And also, the, that would have been like picked up by global newspapers as well, um, global social media, whatever. You know, Barbados had its first case of H1N1, which we had later, but not related to that. Um, so in terms of know how we report just to, to sell some papers we have to be very careful that we you know we don't press the panic button too soon. But the interventions that are being put out there now the, the huge investment on technology for example as Professor Harriet pointed out there's this huge thing on, on technology and fast vehicles and vehicles that are fully equipped and OPVs or whatever it is and less of a, a, a concentration on where a difference can really be made. And that's because there's a panic. There, there is a sense that something needs to be done very urgently. And let's just do something based on what on on the obia or the, the, the mysticism of the situation. You know, something I think maybe we should uh, with all the respect to each other, maybe we should have a day of prayer or something like that that can really um, I don't know, you may or may not um, want to question the value of that. So, I think that um, there's the politics, um, there's the panic, and the prevention. I think I would agree that the media, that, that the practice of, of true journalism, according to the 
to the basic tenet, tenets would position our societies in such a way that there would be a preventative impact in terms of the behave, people's behavior and how they relate that to outcomes. Okay? Um, and it might, be, it might be as simple thing as perceptions about the safety of a particular ge geographical area. When I lived in Jamaica, everybody warned me. I have family there, my wife is Jamaican by the way. Um, everybody, oh, you, can, you better be careful, don't think, don't leave the campus. I roam all over the place. I'm a fool, person. I have to get my tooth pork. I had to find myself in places that people would, would not particularly recommend. But if you if you listen to the um, to the the word on the street, right, you would you would be fearful about about leaving your leaving your house. And then of course, any expert psychiatrist also, psychologist will tell you that suicide is usually not a single cause um, act. Um, how are we reporting the the method used? Because it is a fact that you do get a copycat. But if the copycat behavior is more associated with the modus operandi rather than the act itself. So if um, grammar zone is used and it is reported in, in a way that glamorizes it or makes it appear as if this is the, the surest way out, then you'll find that somebody who is, who is already inclined towards um, suicidal, suicidal behavior may decide that that's the course as opposed to some other some other um, method. So in, the, in that sense, you know, the prevention thing comes in because you are aware. The whole idea is that journalists need to raise the level of awareness of what they're doing, what are the, what are the likely impacts or, or lack of impacts, and ensure that it is all contextualized or framed in such a manner that when it is presented out there, People have a full understanding as opposed to a very fragmented, um, piecemeal kind of understanding of what are the true issues. Because you have episodes and you have issues. The episodic things are what happened and you would, okay, so man gets shot, I was just on to the, there's a murder in Samoa, whatever it is, and it is the male relative of a 33 year old woman. Right? Um, pointed it, and then People will extrapolate from that that because they have had several issues of male relatives of females who have been who have been accused of murdering the women. So then people extrapolate now well, it's a whole set of men in children that are killing their wife <laughs> or girlfriend or whatever it is. So I'm just saying that what, what is needed is a much higher level of awareness. I won't recommend um, self censorship on account of the so-called national good or the image of the country. I think that if, if it is properly presented, if the treatment of it is, is, is appropriate, then by all means, publish it. I would rather go up against a person with a cutlass than a journalist with a pen, okay? Because you have an awesome amount of power yeah. and all I was trying to say is that for you to use that pen carefully, and because you have a lot of power at your 